That was our apartment. You should have discussed it with me. Why? At the very least, I could have told you to never borrow money from my father. How did I become the bad guy here? Where did you get the idea to buy your apartment? How did I wind up in a cage with Petey and Jacob? This funnel cake is delicious. I'm Sharonda Williams, and welcome to Prime Video Recaps. Welcome to Prime Video Recaps, where I will be recapping some of our favorite Prime Video original titles in order for you to catch up before binging a new season. With The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel premiering its final season on April 14th, I thought you might need a little reminder of what happened on season four of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel tells the story of Miriam Midge Maisel, a woman who has everything she's ever wanted. The perfect husband, two kids, and an elegant Upper West Side apartment. But her perfect life suddenly takes an unexpected turn and Midge discovers a previously unknown talent, one that changes her life forever. Now let's fast forward to season four. Let's just say Midge is not too happy about being fired by Shy Baldwin as season four opens with her back to doing stand-up. You know how there are times in your life when things seem to be going great and then suddenly, out of nowhere, you round the corner and bam, someone steps in and fucks it the fuck up. And you never saw it coming because you were too busy being happy. And I know, that's life. Shit happens. You should be a bigger man and just let it go. Well, I'm a woman, so fuck that. I want my fucking pound of flesh. I want my revenge. We then get the backstory of what actually happened after Midge and Susie left the airport in season three. After disposing of any objects or garments that remind her of being fired, Susie and Midge talk things out. Well, sorta. What are you doing? That was a hat! It still had the price tag on it! Miriam, do we need a pill? <laughs> hey. I don't want it. Look, it completes the outfit! Will you stop? I don't want anything about this night or associated with this night in this cab with us. Am I next? Stop! Stop the cab! What? Fuck her! I won. You thought you could beat me, but you couldn't! Yeah, you showed him! Now that the skirt has learned its lesson, why don't you get back in the cat, Miriam? Midge decides that if she is going to stick with this, then she has to be free to say what's on her mind at all times and no more opening act gigs. Midge texts the paper to see she has already been replaced on the tour by Jack Ballard and that they already knew they were firing her before she made it to the airport. Midge tells Susie that she used her contract for the tour as collateral to borrow money from her father-in-law, Moish, to buy her old apartment back. Midge asks Susie for the money she was holding for her for the first part of her tour. Susie, who lost Midge's money gambling, buys a little more time to go get her money from the insurance company to give to Midge. Susie and her sister Tess meet with the insurance company to collect the insurance money from their mom's house burning down. They answer additional questions but are unable to collect the money until a few more loose ends are tied up. Nice. Were you paying attention? They know what we did, Tess. So what? You think they're not gonna give us the check? I think they're gonna call the cops. Oh, but that's sh house. Susie then goes to Joel to ask for a loan to give Midge her money. When Joel asks Susie what happened to the money Midge gave her, she abruptly leaves so she doesn't have to tell him she lost it. Joel's club is doing well and May's family is not too happy about it. They tell her to not talk to Joel anymore and they don't want Joel's club to be successful anymore because it might bring too much attention to the gambling happening underneath the club. Midge meets the family at Coney Island at Ethan's new birthday party and tries to tell them what happened to her but they really aren't trying to hear her out. She finally tells them and Moish mentions that she bought the apartment back through him which Joel isn't too happy about. You bought our apartment? Yes, I bought our apartment. And you borrowed money from my father? Why is that bad? Joel then decides to write Susie a check for the money she owes Midge under the condition that she tells him everything that happened to Midge's money. Midge meets with Susie to get her money and also to come up with a plan on how to move forward as a comedian. Midge moves back into her old apartment and is now reacquainting herself with the neighborhood. Abe starts his new job at the Village Voice as their chief theater critic. Midge asks her parents to move into her apartment with them and they eventually agree. Susie goes to visit Sophie Lennon at an institution and Susie wants her to sign a paper absolving her of their working relationship, but Sophie isn't having it. So many adventures before us. Me, 
and my manager. I am not your manager. You are. I'm not. Sophie eventually signs the papers with a fake name and leaves. Mitch sees on TV that Shy Baldwin is getting engaged. Tess calls Susie to tell her that the insurance company is finally cutting the check for them. Susie meets with Harry to get some guidance on how to move forward as a manager after her failures with Sophie and Mitch. Susie tries to take Mitch to a club to get her to perform, but it seems she has been iced out. Susie finds a smart way to get Midge back on the stage and she kills it in the short time she's on the stage before she is kicked out and then arrested. She meets a young dancer from the Wolford in jail who was arrested for the first time and Susie bails her out. They drop her off at a club called the Wolford where Midge gets an idea. Joel's mom sets him up on a surprise date and let's just say that's not all he was surprised about. I wonder if she brought her flout. She's pregnant! Just a little. That kid is almost walking! Susie pays Joel back the money he lent her. Midge is now working at the Wolford and things are a little crazy over there. Susie finds out that her roommate Jackie passed away. Susie stays with Midge and her family for a while since she is uncomfortable about sleeping where someone passed away. Susie and Midge attend Jackie's funeral. Midge runs into Lenny Bruce while she is working at the Wolford. Midge's mom, Rose's matchmaking business is going very well. Abe and the family attend an old friend's theater premiere for a review he has to write. Abe ends up hating the play to say the least. Once his review goes live, their friends are not having it. Abe receives a phone call from an old friend of me, Asher Friedman, who is upset to read in his theater review that he admitted to a crime they committed in the past. His review calls the FBI to reach out to Asher and request it they both meet with them. Midge is still having problems with how the club is being run at the Wolford. Midge goes on a date, but she is definitely not feeling him at all. At this point, it's safe to say Susie is starting to wear out her welcome in Midge's apartment. I forgot it was to blame Mordecai, so it was off or not, but you get my point. Her time here does seem endless. Joel moves into his new apartment, but that doesn't stop his mom from trying to set him up on a date. Joel tells May that it's time for her to meet his parents, but she is against it. Abe and Asher find out that there won't be any consequences for their old crimes once they have their final interview with the FBI. The celebration is short-lived as during their final interview, Abe implicates Asher as being the only person to go into the building. Abe is upset because he found out that Rose and Asher had previously dated 35 years ago. Susie finally finds her own place to sleep and run her management business. She also finds a new client to add to her roster, a magician by the name of Alfie. Midge makes an assumption about Susie's sexual and now they aren't on speaking terms. Midge decides to make some ground rules at the Wolford. Midge is also starting to make some headway with her stand-up. Well, almost. Boy, you're almost as funny as the men comics. We're gonna work on that. Midge goes to Joel's club to try out her new bits and let him know about her new place of employment. Sophie finds Susie at her new place, which comes as a shock to her. Sophie tells her she can't find work and she wants Susie to help her land a gig as a host of a new game show. Susie reluctantly agrees. Susie is doing interviews for secretaries for her new office slash home. Abe and Rose are still fighting about the Asher situation. May finally agrees to meet Joel's parents, but Joel ends up going by himself because May got sick. Midge shows Susie that they were both invited to Shy Baldwin's wedding. They attend the wedding and Midge runs into Shy in the bathroom. They finally have a chance to talk things out about what happened. As Midge and Susie are about to leave, they are asked by two gentlemen to follow them. They meet with Shy's team and they offer the money to sign an NDA to not disclose what she knows about him, but she says no. Rose meets with the wealthy Solomon Melamed for a meeting at his estate. He wants her to find his daughter suitable matches for marriage. Rose agrees as this will be lucrative for her matchmaking business. Rose later finds out that Midge is working at the Wolford and confronts her about it. Rose is concerned that her daughter's new job will be an issue for her new client and asks Midge to quit. Susie has Sophie meet with an executive by the name of Mike Carr in the hopes of getting her an interview on a TV show. She ends up going on the Gordon Ford show and she kills it. Midge finds Lenny Bruce passed out on the sidewalk and takes him home to wear it off. Lenny isn't too appreciative of the generosity and immediately tries to leave. Susie hires a new secretary for her office. Sophie books her game show. Business is booming at the Wolford due to more women coming to see Midge perform. This causes an issue for their business partners because too many women are attending the shows now. 
Once the men realize their booze sales are up because of the women, they decide to leave things as they are. Midge goes to see Elroy Dunham, the journalist who keeps writing terrible reviews about her and makes a shocking discovery. You're the one who's been writing all those terrible articles. Actually, I think they're pretty good, but yes. You're a woman. Sophie goes to see Midge to ask her to get Susie to manage her again. She tells Midge if she gets Susie to manage her, she will let her perform on her NBC show. May tells Joel that she is pregnant. Susie books Alfie a gig at Joel's club, but he disappears. Rose is invited to a business meeting, only to find that it is an ambush by other matchmakers confronting her about her new business venture. They tell her to stop her business at once. Mitch convinces Susie to agree to Sophie's deal. Mitch goes to perform at the show and is going well until Sophie decides to crash her set. Things go off the rails very quickly. Midge meets a handsome new man and develops a bit of a crush. After weeks of flirting, things get a little hot and heavy, only to find out that her knight in shiny armor is actually married. Abe is approached by some of the matchmaking women in an effort to tell Rose to stop pursuing her business. Joel tells Midge about the baby. Susie gets Alfie a gig for his magic act. He hypnotizes Rose and gets her to do a stand-up act that doesn't go too well for the family. What happened? You all look so strange. May I talk to you outside? Midge takes a new gig performing at a John F. Kennedy ladies fundraiser in front of Jackie Kennedy. Things are going great until Midge tells a racy story that causes Jackie Kennedy and the rest of the audience to cry. Dinah introduces Susie to a potential new client, a comedian by the name of James. Midge sees Lenny on the Golden Fort show talking about his upcoming show at Carnegie Hall. Joel tells his father Moish about May and the baby and his reaction is quite interesting. The family rushes to the hospital to check on Moish, who is currently unconscious from his heart attack. Lenny goes to see Midge during one of her sets to apologize to her. He also offers her another gig until they are interrupted as the Wolford is being raided by the cops. Midge and Lenny run out together into the middle of a snowstorm. They head to Lenny's hotel to get out of the cold. Things then get hot and heavy as the two share an intimate moment together. Midge makes a startling discovery with Lenny. Moish finally wakes up, May meets the family. Midge declines the Tony Bennett gig since she no longer wants to be an opening act. Midge confronts Susie about why Frank and Nikki are really in business with her. Susie isn't trying to hear anything from Midge right now since she keeps turning down gigs. Moish returns home. Moish tells Joel he is okay with him and May, but May needs to become Jewish. Abe gets romantic and fully supports Rose's matchmaking business. Rose sends a message to her competition. Lenny Bruce performs at Carnegie Hall and kills it. Lenny is upset with Midge for turning down the Tony Bennett gig and other gigs around town. Lenny feels like Midge isn't taking her opportunities seriously. He tells her to stop hiding and get to work. He leaves her with a few parting words. Keep working. There is a moment in this business, windows open. If you miss it, it closes. Just don't. If you blow this midge, I swear. You will break my f heart. Season four ends with Midge on the brink of making an important career decision. Don't forget to watch the fifth and final season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, premiering its first three episodes on April 14th, with new episodes airing each week after. Once again, thank you for watching Prime Video Recaps. Mm -hmm.